Hi, this is Stacy Keon with the Farmhouse in the Field. I don't know, I think we're all hardworking people out there, but way too many times we come across a situation where there's more month at the end of the money than there is money at the end of the month. Couple that with back to school and everybody rushing in the morning to get out the front door, and you end up spending a lot of time running to convenience stores or, or going through the drive through for breakfast sandwiches and that and the like. And that really adds up at the end of the month or at the end of the month or the end of the week with money that you really didn't intend on spending but you did for convenience. So what I thought we'd do today is I'm gonna show you how I save a little money by making breakfast sandwiches. Now I know there's tons of recipes out there and I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos. I know that I've tried probably every recipe out there that I've come across, uh, but what makes mine special is that I've kind of learned to streamline it, so that instead of making a few sandwiches or making a whole bunch at once, but in special pans, a muffin pan or muffin top pan, and having this miserable pan that I have to clean afterwards, I've really managed to make about eight, at, eight to ten at a time, and that makes it, the process so much easier. Because after all, who has time on the weekends to spend all their time in the kitchen? As much as we might like to bake, we have things to do. We've got places we've got to go. So what I'm going to do is invite you into the kitchen, and I'm going to show you how I make breakfast sandwiches, how we wrap them up, and during the week all you've got to do is take them out, take it to work, microwave it for a couple minutes, and breakfast is served. Okay, so here are our ingredients. Um, pretty standard. We've got our eggs, um, some pan spray, we have whatever cheese we've got. Uh, these I pick up, although unfortunately I only have one right now. These I pick up at Aldi's. They're frozen pork sausage patties. Uh, it costs you about $4.99 at my Aldi's. And they're a godsend because you just plop them on. You don't even have to worry about them. And my English muffins. You can put these on obviously anything. Um, I buy these at the thrift store. Uh, if you do not have a bread thrift store or know what that is, many bakery companies open up stores that they bring in merchandise that didn't sell from your grocery stores. The grocery stores are contracted with them for a certain amount of deliveries of fresh bread every time um, and so when they're getting ready to get a new batch of bread in what they'll do is they'll buy the bakery companies will buy back the bread that didn't sell and then put it into their stores there is nothing wrong with this bread absolutely nothing wrong with it um, the bread is sold at a considerable cost savings so where something might be $4 in the store, you can get it for $2.39. Um, and I go to the bread store when we do, and I will buy $30 worth of bread and just put it in my freezer. Uh, we used to have three bread stores. Unfortunately, we had a Hostess one, we had Fryhoffers, and we had another brand, I think it was Sh Sh Shaler's or something. And the... The only one that's left right now is Fryhoffers. But you can go in there, you can get your pizza crust, um, your bubbly, you can get the kids' snacks for school, you can get um, your bread, your... And it's all name brand, for the most part. And a lot of it's artisanal, so it totally, totally is worth it. Um, now, quite, uh, just something about the eggs. Um, you can absolutely use use your store eggs, you know, 99 cents. It's what they're going for about here. But what I recommend is if you got a chance, support your local farmers. They'll cost you 2 or $3 for a dozen, but they'll be a heck of a lot fresher than anything you're going to buy in this grocery store. And with eggs that are coming from your own farm, I didn't know this until I had chickens, as long as you don't wash them when you bring them in, they are perfectly safe for approximately two weeks on your counter. I uh, can vouch for this. I do this all the time. If I don't have any fridge space, they go right onto my counter in 
in a old egg carton. Um, so the first thing we're well, and the other thing that's very important is the cake pan. This is what's going to save you so much time and grief. I've got Roman here wanting to take be part of this shot here. Um, but the cake pan is what's going to save you a lot of grief. I have done probably these egg sandwiches in just about any configuration that you've seen on the internet or on YouTube. I've done them with the pancake rounds, I've done them with the muffin pans, I've done them with the muffin top pans, uh, and what ends up happening is you end up sure with a round egg, um, but it ends up basically leaving you with a pan that's miserable to clean. One day it just occurred to me, it's like, why am I trying to make these rounds? Well, the only reason I'm trying to make them round is because that is what we've always seen. That's what we see at all the convenience stores or all the uh, drive throughs We see them round. You use a, a square of cake, cake, yeah, cake pan, it is so much easier to clean. You know, you put it in, you divide them up, and that way you can make a whole bunch at once. You're not trying to fish an egg out of a little tiny cupcake container. You just cut it up and you lift it out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spray the pan with our cooking oil. We're going to then mix up our egg. and We're going to pop it in here. And then we're going to put some cheese on top of it. Now that's, that's where you can decide whether you want to put cheese on it at the beginning or if you want to wait until you're actually assembling the sandwiches. Um, right now all I've got is the grated cheese. And so that's going to be what I'm going to put on top of it. We've preheated our oven to 350. And I usually, it depends on the thickness of the egg um, layer in here. I usually start at, at half an hour. Um, put them in, go do something else. Come back and check them, see if the, they're done. If they're not, kick it in for another 5-10 minutes and just do that until your eggs are set. Um, so we're going to do that right now. We'll get this all set up for us. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this. So my house was built in 1867 and I'm pretty sure the kitchen was put that on at that time as well. Um, in fact, underneath the stove when we went to do our flooring in here, there's actually a well. So apparently right here is where the old uh, well pump used to be for inside the house. They probably had a little dry sink in here. Um, so we've just mixed the eggs and we sprayed our pan. We're going to put, oh there's an eggshell. <laughs> we're going to put our eggs in there and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just get our cheese, whatever cheese we have, and we're going to put on top of this and we will pop it in the oven for about 30 minutes. Okay, so the eggs are out of the oven. Now all we're going to do is we're going to split them down the middle. We're going to split them up ways. I think we're going to get about eight here. Okay, and then we're just going to wait for our muffins. I had to put my English muffins in the oven because they were still frozen. We'll wait for those to unfreeze and then we'll split them in half and we'll toast them. Okay, now we're going to split all of our muffins and we're going to put them under the broiler. We have to really watch these steps because the, at this step because these can all go get burned pretty quickly. Okay, so we've got the muffins out of the broiler. We simply now assemble. All we do is we put a frozen uh, patty for the ones that we're going to freeze with an egg, with another top, and we wrap it in our tin foil. Mark it for what it is, put in the freezer, and we now just did eight. We'll just continue on and do all of these, get them all done, and we will have breakfast for the week, and no more stopping at the convenience store or the drive through Saved ourselves a lot of money, and we know what's in our breakfast sandwiches, so we saved a lot of who knows what chemicals that they've put in there to preserve everything. So that is how I make my breakfast sandwiches. If you enjoyed this uh, video, please hit that subscribe button. 
down below and uh, keep in tune for uh, future videos.